was like, oh my gosh, I think that's it. Today, Ryan and I, joined by our friend and professional guide Rachel Clark, are birding the Monterey Bay area in search of some unique species, including a rarity, the red-footed booby. As we drove towards the coast, we could feel the anticipation building for our first views of the Pacific Ocean. We're getting to the point where we're on the lookout for the Pacific Ocean. First views that I've ever gotten of it. Derek may or may not have seen it because he was in Los Angeles before, uh, but he doesn't really remember. So clearly it didn't make that much of an impact. So I think this will be kind of like his first view. That's true. I don't think I saw it. I think I would remember. On the way, we also talked about some of the other marine life that we might see. A chance for sea lion, seals, maybe some sea otters, lots of stuff to see out there in addition to the birds that we're looking for. As we entered the wharf, our first order of business was to scan a particular boat to see if the immature red-footed booby was perched in its usual spot. To our surprise, it seemed like it was. What did you see? I'm pretty sure we have the booby right now. It was like we talked to someone on the way in, and they said that they like walked the whole harbor and didn't see it, and then I checked out the boat, it's the Mary Louise, and I was like, oh my gosh, I think that's it. Oh, we got pigeon guillemots over here, and then the booby, that's like, Wow, that's that's like the pine flycatcher level. Like, pretty it's much, insane. yeah. That's like a super rare bird for probably anywhere, pretty much other than Hawaii and some parts of like the southern coast, I guess. But yeah, it's right there. That's that like epic. that makes the whole like even aside from all the other lifers, that's an incredible bird, dude. Rachel's on a phone call right now. We gotta get her out here so that she that's can her see lifer, this. Yeah, yeah that's gonna be a lifer be. for her. I said, when the guide gets a lifer, that's a big deal. Nice. Woohoo! Lifer New alert! Lifer! Yeah! That's awesome. Booby deserves a high five. Heck yeah, it does. Booby five. All right, give me five, Derek. The smallest of the six booby species, the red-footed booby is named for its vibrant red feet which are considerably more red in mature birds. Adult red-footed boobies also come in different color morphs, the light morph having a white body with black wings, and the dark morph having a tan body with dark wings. These tropical seabirds are normally found far south of California and can be spotted off the Pacific or Atlantic coast of Central America and can also be found on Hawaii. They nest in trees in sunny areas, and use grasses or man-made objects in their nests. Their diet consists mostly of fish and squid, and they will swallow their food before taking flight. I think that's undoubtedly the best life we're gonna get on the trip. Best is in like rarest? Yes. But yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm I'm stoked that we were able to get this. It was it, such a on a whim thing too, yeah, like, like, hey yeah, looks at there's a red booby. Movie. Did you think there was any chance you would get a life for this trip? No, I was pretty convinced that that would not happen, but I'm not complaining. I'll take it. With the booby, it's so rare that I feel like I just need to stare at it and appreciate it, but there's so much other stuff to look at that it's tough to, like, it's tough to take my eyes away from it, but then there's like, but I want to look at this and this other thing and this other thing. So it's, uh, it's a good problem to have. After enjoying some views of our lifer immature red-footed booby, we turned our attention to some of the marine mammals in the harbor. So Rachel spotted a sea otter out here, so we've been checking that. It looks very laid back. Also, some of the sea lions are swimming around too. So there's so much interesting stuff to look at out here. I absolutely love it here. There's just like random people fishing and stuff, and there's all this cool wildlife. This is just such a neat place, and it's our first look at the Pacific Ocean that we've gotten too. So down here loafing is a bunch of California sea lions. You can probably hear them in the background. One of the ways to distinguish between a seal and a sea lion is sea lions will have the external ears and seals will have the internal ears. So these, you can see the ears outside, California sea lions. But they are really fat, really noisy, a big part of the beach area here.
California sea lions are native to the western coast of North America. Males make barking noises to communicate, and sea lions are very loud and charismatic. In addition to their usual antics, sea lions will also do something where they hold their flippers above their head to conserve energy and regulate their temperature, called rafting, which we observe them doing in the bay. Nearby, both pelagic and brant's cormorants were out and about, and we stopped to compare the two species when a pelagic cormorant perched up close to us. Here's the uh, yeah. young. Most definitely. Oh, yeah, yes. you're absolutely right about that bill too. Like that mm -hmm. thing is a needle versus that one. That's yeah. kind of crazy actually. Yeah, it's kind of cool. But yeah, really, and it's really plain chin too. This guy, which this guy has kind of browner overall. But yeah, no, no pale chin feathering. Dainty beak, just kind of daintier overall. So. Yeah, that's, that's a good our pelagic. Call on that one. It's a good look at it too. Yeah. The pelagic cormorant is a lanky, long-necked bird with black body coloration that has a green sheen to it, an orange throat patch, and a long, thin bill. Breeding adults have white patches on their flanks that are visible in flight, which makes them easy to separate from the Brant's cormorant. They can be found on the Pacific coast of North America and are normally seen as single birds or pairs. Despite their name, they're normally not seen too far from shore, but can dive to depths of 138 feet and can stay underwater for over two minutes in pursuit of fish. I feel like cormorants are a species of bird that a lot of people kind of gloss over because, you know, they're kind of all brownish, snaky kind of looking birds. But when you really see the details in these different species, there's a lot to appreciate there and a lot of unique things to note on them. So up on this roof, we have some pelagic cormorants. And Rachel was telling us to look for that really thin bill, which you can see on these. There's an adult, two juveniles, and then there's also some western gulls next to them, which are pretty much everywhere, but we haven't really seen a lot. So we've been appreciating those but really enjoying the close-up cormorant views because I think this is probably going to be the closest we'll be able to get. Another species that was surprisingly close were the pigeon guillemots that were delightful to watch with their black and white coloration and bright red feet. One of the birds here that I just cannot get enough of are the pigeon guillemots and they are a cross between kind of a dove and a penguin and they are so strikingly beautiful with their bright red feet that dark coloration and then the white on the wings. It's just such a cool looking species I've never seen anything like before. So I just cannot get enough of them. I've taken so many videos and I'm really excited that we were able to see that species. This is really fun trying to pick out all the stuff by the ocean. We have a little bit of precipitation right now and it's actually way cooler than it was back in the interior part of the state. So it's a totally brand new place with brand new vibes that we're getting and a lot of cool birds here as well. We walked to the end of the wharf past the Monterey Fish Company and couldn't help but notice the hungry western gulls. Adult western gulls have a large head, dark gray wings, pink legs, an orange ring around their eye, and a red spot on their bill. True to their name, they are common on the west coast of North America. They feed on fish and invertebrates, but will also eat just about anything they can fit in their mouth. In fact, western gulls have actually been known to steal milk from mother seals while they're sleeping. In the Pacific Northwest, hybrids between western and glaucous wing gulls are extremely common, and sometimes it's difficult to tell if you're looking at a pure western gull or a hybrid. Although western gulls are common, they are considered a species on conservation watch due to their susceptibility to changes in climate and oil spills. The oldest known western gull was close to 34 years old when it was recited. Move down to the end and have some better looks at the booby. One thing close to the end is that you get that smell of like all the gull excrement in the sea lions. It reminds me of the zoo like when you walk by the penguin exhibit. So it's definitely pungent, but Ryan was saying he feels like it's, you know, you expect that to be here, so it's not as bad as like if you opened your refrigerator and had that smell. But um, I think we're gonna move on from here soon. We had some great finds and hopefully we'll continue that. On the way back, we got some more looks at species we had already seen including the red-footed booby, which seemed very content on its perch. I can't believe how cool this place is and that we got the booby. Amazing. 
We left Monterey Bay feeling thankful that we had the opportunity to enjoy this unique environment and to even see a rare bird. We were also thankful to have Rachel with us, who helped give us additional information about each species, as well as identification features. If you're interested in hiring her as your guide for the area, check out her website in the description below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Thank <laughs> you.